October 28, 1992. Dear Mr. Brim, I am a freelance writer specializing in pet care articles and a frequent contributor to Cats Magazine. Last year we met at the CFA Invitational Cat Show in Fort Worth when Kate Segner, Cat Fancy Editor, introduced us. As a member of the Dog Writers Association of America, it has puzzled me for some time why there is no such organization for cat writers. When I spoke with Kate, she said you'd both discussed such an idea in the past. I'll be meeting Debbie Phillips Donaldson, the current Cat Fancy editor, at this year's CFA Invitational in Fort Worth on Saturday, November 21st, and we'll be exploring the possibility and logistics of forming a Cat Writers Association. For such an organization to work, I believe it will take input from all cat-interested factions, established cat publication editors, both large and small, show professionals and amateurs, humane organizations, and of course, the pet cat, non-pedigreed enthusiasts. Briefly, I believe the purpose of such an organization should be to be a major influence for good on the cat fancy by providing news, information, and education on all aspects of cats, including, but not limited to, proper cat ownership, cat showing, responsible cat breeding, health care, training, and behavior aspects, to improve the quality of writing about cats, to encourage cat writing in general newspapers and magazines, and to recognize outstanding writing about cats. I hope that if you're also still interested and aren't too busy, we might meet at the CFA Invitational and discuss these ideas. Very truly yours, Amy D. Shajai. Four of us attended that first organizational meeting. I said that I'd do any job except treasurer. You don't want me handling money. So Michael volunteered to be vice president. Debbie Phillips Donaldson took minutes and volunteered to serve as secretary. Suzanne Stowe, then working in circulation for fancy publications, volunteered to be treasurer. That left me with president by default. The four of us were self-appointed as interim officers until an official election could be held. And Michael surprised us all later that night by announcing at the CFA banquet the formation of the Cat Writers Association and introducing us to the gathering. And we were off and running. Our first efforts were to contact well-known cat writers to let them know about the new organization and to invite them to serve as Interim Advisory Council Board of Directors. This designation was later changed to Council of Directors. We also believed these movers and shakers of the cat world could extend their paw reach to their own audience to spread the word among those who already wrote and published and those with an interest in pursuing that dream. A new organization takes lots of time to nurture, and all of us had real jobs that demanded a lot. Debbie reluctantly resigned as secretary in February 1993, feeling she wouldn't have the time necessary to devote to the new organization, and she moved to interim director position. This also was to allay the perception CWA was an arm of fancy publications. In those early days, great attention was paid to keep CWA nonpartisan, so potential members wouldn't perceive it to be only for breeders, or only for pet cat owners, or only fill in the blank. I assumed the role of both president, secretary, and newsletter editor. Since I had become a full-time freelance writer, my schedule and deadlines allowed for more flexibility. Together, we designed an application flyer and press card printed by Michael Brim, courtesy of CFA, faxing copy back and forth. Remember, this was before email. 
On February 17, 1993, our press release went out on official Cat Writers Association letterhead that included our interim officers and directors. We worked with charter member John McGonigal, an attorney, to write and file bylaws and articles of incorporation. CWA received its nonprofit charter from the state of Texas on June 29, 1993. By the next month, July of 93, when the first CWA newsletter was published, we had received requests for more information from more than 150 cat communicators from 38 states, including writers from Alaska, Puerto Rico, and Canada. Of those, 36 became our charter members. Here, in part, is my first President's message published in the first newsletter. CWA is still a kitten in terms of age and experience, but like a kitten, the association is growing fast. It's been guided and nurtured over the past months by many caring individuals, cat lovers all, who have donated their time, energy, and expertise to shape an organization that serves us well. The potential this association has is limitless. From the beginning, I envisioned CWA as first and foremost a writer's organization composed of diverse voices and viewpoints from every corner of the cat writing world. CWA is inclusive rather than exclusive, which means our membership is a rather eclectic mix. That, I believe, is one of our greatest strengths. To qualify for membership, an individual must have an honest love and concern for cats and have the demonstrable ability to skillfully communicate about them. I congratulate you all for qualifying as charter members. You have established the standard. It is my sincere hope that a reputation for excellence will become the hallmark of CWA. It is necessary, I think, to make very clear at the outset that as a non-profit organization, CWA must never be a commercial or political organ. What does the future hold for CWA? That's very much up to the membership. It's your organization. The association can only grow through the work of talented members who share their ideas, enthusiasm, and time. CWA's kittenhood will be an exciting time of growth and exploration. I'm proud to serve as the Association's first president and will work tirelessly to promote the interest of CWA and help direct it toward an exciting, brilliant future. <laughs>